Hello team and welcome in the third part of short series about handling files of the Databricks where at the beginning we were talking about the basics, then about DBFS. Today we are going to talk about the DBUtils, which stands for Databricks Utilities. And in the next parts we will be exploring PySpark SQL and at the end a challenge. And when it's going about the DBUtils, it's really so essential for so many things. And today we will be using, using it to browser DBFS, manage folders, we will be mounting Azure Blob Storage. You can also do the same for the AWS or GCP, but today we'll be focusing on Azure. You can run some basic data analytics, run under their notebook and other a bit more advanced things. So let's get started. So first things first, I have my notebook, default language for it is Python and it's already connected to the cluster. So the first thing is that in the DBUtils you have wonderful help, kind of documentation. And here comes the list of, it's not a function, but they got categories of function or modules in the DBUtils. And to get a list of the functions there, it's enough to write DBUtils dot category like FS. This is something that we'll be very, very frequently using. It stands for the file system and then dot help. And here is actually a list of the function in that module. And the list is pretty long because you can do really a lot of things with it, like mount uh, additional storage. We will be doing that for Azure Blob Storage, but also copy files, create a folders and so on. If we are interested about help about the specific functions, we can give that function in the bracket. And that's the description of this specific function. LS, of course, list the content of the directory. So let's move on. The first thing is something what we were already doing a lot in the previous episodes is we can use the dbutils to browser dbfs, like in this case dbutils.fs.ls and the path, which is, which is interesting for us. So control enter. And that's how we get a list of the content. Just the problem is that it's basically hard to read. But here, what is very useful is a function display, which will make it a bit more pretty, definitely more readable. And we get basically the same as above, just in the form of the table. And here it is. Now it's, it's way more readable. But something what we were not doing, there is a shortcut for listing a files in the specific folder. And the shortcut is we can use a magic command fs ls and the file directory like here and we will get exactly exactly the same results so this is really cool and not many people knows about it as you can see here you have different information like a name size or modification time and you can extract very specific information which is interesting for you in my case i'm iterating through the results of the dbutils fs ls and then a path here i am listening the content of the dbutils uh, databricks data sets and then if size is larger than zero, I want to print the file name. So this is path. I want to print a path and a size, just the size I want to read. Uh, I want to write in the megabytes. Otherwise, it will not be readable. And and this is what I get. But in the previous episode, we were saying that really cool data set is New York City taxi because it's way larger. So let us print the content of this folder and let's see how large are the files in that folder. And by the way, printing the size of the files, it's something what you'll be commonly doing. So that's the way you can do that. And that's the way you can translate a size, which at the beginning you were, see, you were getting in not readable form really into something what is more readable in the megabytes. And as we can see in the New York City taxis, we will get a plenty of files, which are each of it is size over 100 megabytes. So this is really cool. And we can also display, we can also use dbutilsfs, another interesting function head to display the content of the text file. I think we were also doing that in the previous episode, but it's worth to remember about it. And that's how it looks like. So it's really, really handy, but if we could list the content of the directory by using a magic command fs, which essentially is a shortcut for the dbutils.fs, then the same way we can use a magic command fs head and the path to the file and it will get the same results. Just actually it looks nicer like, like this. Okay, let's move on. So thanks to the DBUtils, managing folders in the DBFS is very simple. And by managing, I mean different operations, including creation. And to create a folder, it's enough to use the function mkdirs and then the path which you want to create. 
like in this case i'm creating a new folder called new in the file store folder which already exists in everyone's dbfs and i get as the response true meaning the folder has been created now i can use another function to copy some file into that directory and i expect also true as the results and i can list a content of that file of that folder so everything works as expected now i decided to delay that folder so i want to use function rm but unfortunately this will fail and the reason for this failing is because the directory is not empty to deal with that it's enough to add additional second function which is information to rm to delete everything recursively so no matter what's inside and now everything everything hold the folder will be deleted in one of the previous episodes, we were explaining the concept of mounting a storage. So in the DBFS, DBFS, you have your root directories, which everyone has, but you can also add a month a new directories. Like in my case, I would like to add, I would like to mount Azure Blob Storage. So what does it mean? So I have here my Azure account and I can go to the storage and in the storage, this is the one which is interesting for me. And in the storage, I will, of course, have a container. So I can go to the containers. And I have one prepared specially for this occasion, which is called mounting and demo. And this is Azure Blob Storage, with where I have a data. In my case, there is one file called companies.csv. I would like to have this Azure Blob Storage accessible in the DBFS for the Databricks. And in that purpose, this is something, depends what you are using. If you are using AWS or GCP, it will look a bit differently, but you can find it easily in the documentation. You, I can use a dbfs.fs.mount. I can specify a set of parameters. Like in this case, it's source, and I need to specify the container name. So the container name for me is mounting demo. I need to specify storage account name and in my case this is the name of the storage account and I also need to specify a target directory where for which I want to access that Azure Blob storage plus add some configuration here I need to again fill in the storage account name and I need to provide a key to that, to that storage account and that's how it looks like in my case so basically this fs mount fill it in with my specific data and the, the storage account I took from I will get back to the Azure I took from I need to go back to the storage and in the storage I have access key and here I have a key which I have copied and put it over here and that's how it looks like so now once i will run this command what i expect is that this azure blob storage with the data which i want to access will be available for me in the databricks so this is again this is the container and that's my data so let me run this command I got the response true, so this suggests me that everything went fine. And as a target directory, I wrote MNT Azure Data. So let me now display the content of that directory. And here I have the file. So using that path, I can access the, the file which is which is uploaded to this Azure Blob storage, and you can do the same in your case. Now, if I decide to unmount this data, this is not common, it's way more common to mount the data, but if you want to unmount the data, I use function unmount, control enter, and Azure Blob Storage will no longer be available for me. And even if you will not be mounting uh, Azure Blob Storage or other storage by yourself, it's, it's worth to always know how it looks like. You can achieve similar results using a Databricks Unity, Unity catalog, but that's the topic for another episode. And the DBUT is the same as everything else, is being extended with the new features. And there is actually a new feature for the data, basic data analytics. And here we have some sample small file, which looks like this. Doesn't matter what the data are about. Now, let's say that we would like to get the basic statistics about that file. Then we can also use a DBUT. It will be enough to read that data to the data frame. We will be doing that in the next episode. And then we can use a new function in the DBUT, which is called dbutils.data.summarize and I, as the option I'm giving that data frame control enter and we get a couple of fancy looking charts giving the statistics about the files like the like count missing unique and so on so you know it's uh, like if you want to check what's happening in the data set that's something that you can easily and quickly use okay let's move on another very very useful feature in the dbutils is actually the possibility to manage a notebooks and meaning to run another notebook. 
And in the folder where this notebook is created, I have another notebook over here and it's called another notebook, surprise. And the content of that notebook is very simple. There is only one print, which is just printed check. So that's, that's a temporary notebook, which I created just to demonstrate you how you can run another notebook. I will get back to this one. And now using dbutils, dbutils.notebook.run and specifying a path to that notebook. And here I'm using dot and slash. It's an information that run the notebook with this name, which is located in the current folder. I want to run that folder. And if I hit control enter, the second notebook will be executed. I can access that execution by clicking this reference notebook job, click and I see that that notebook has been executed. Here I have the information when it started, when it's ended. So that's, it's very useful. Once your code will become larger and larger, you will be after writing different pieces of the codes in the separate notebooks to avoid writing everything in one. And another way of running another notebook is by using magic command run and the rest the path is exactly the same and actually in this case i get printed exactly the outcome of that notebook which i executed so there is different options depends on what you need and the last thing for this episode when it's going about the debuters in the next episode we'll be doing actually some pretty cool coding with the PySpark. but the last thing for this episode is that we have also other options available in the dbutils. We will not get into the details, but what is very, very important is you can create widgets. We have a separate movie about widgets. It's a bit more advanced. You can create a secrets and or manage a jobs. So this will be exploring in the next episodes. And that's it when it's going about the boring part of that series. In the next one, we will be reading and writing data with PySpark, which is really cool. And we'll be actually doing a proper coding from the beginning till end. Cheers.